All right, guys, uh, we're going to do your video walkthrough on your Fusion. Uh, we're going to start here with your LP tanks. Uh, you have two tanks here um, with a pressure, with a regulator on the back. Um, if you look at this, the one that has the green dot is pointing to the tank that you're drawing from. So right now we're drawing off of this tank here. Um, when this one runs empty, go ahead and switch that over, and then you'll be drawing off of this tank. At that point, you can um, untwist the empty tank, go ahead and fill that up, reattach it, and just continue the cycle. Back here is your battery. Uh, this is a deep cycle battery. Uh, it's not maintenance free. You need to check the water levels on it periodically. Make sure that that water is staying above the cells. Uh, when they heat up and when you use the battery, it, uh, um, it uh, evaporates that water. So make sure you use distilled water when you fill that up. And um, yeah, check that out every four to six weeks or so. Over here is your generator. Um, you guys have a great um, Cummins generator. Um, prime to start, you just hold it down that way and then obviously push this way and it'll start. I'm not gonna start it because you're plugged into power, um, but that's how you start it. You can also start it on the inside, which I'll show you guys when we get there. Moving back this way, this is your sewer connection here, guys. Um, Obviously, pull the cap off, hook on the sewer hose. When you flush, you want to first make sure you have two-thirds to three-fourths of your black tank full. Um, you'll pull your black valve first, which is this one back here, um, and then you'll pull your gray one here. Uh, that reason for that is so that your gray water, your cleaner of the two waters, cleans out your hose before you have to handle it. Right here, you have an outside shower uh, with a hose that is inside actually that you can attach onto here. Uh, when you winterize your unit and dewinterize your unit, don't forget this spot. Um, your lines can bust if you don't uh, winterize and dewinterize this location here. So don't forget about that. Your city water connection is right here. Um, we recommend that you guys get a pressure regulator for this for your water. Um, a lot of our techs suggest that you actually put that pressure regulator on where you hook up. That way your hose is also regulated what comes off of this. Your water heater is here, guys. Um, when the water is filled, obviously it is because the plug is in. First thing you want to do is check this valve right here. If it is hot, do not pull this because obviously there's water in it. It's hot. If it's not hot, if you want to check, just give a little tug. Water comes out. That way we know it is filled. In order to run your electric part of your water heater, you have to remove this pin and flip this toggle switch to on. Uh, it's a safety precaution for kids who like to uh, play with buttons and things on the inside. Um, if this water heater is not full of water and you turn this electrical switch on, uh, you will burn the element up in a matter of minutes. So if you try to start it on electric, it doesn't work, come out here, you probably haven't flipped, flipped this toggle switch. Something else you keep in mind when um, it comes time to winterize and dewinterize your unit, guys, you'll need to bypass your water heater. Um, there's a little bit of involved there, obviously, releasing all the pressure in your, in your water heater, removing this, um, and then going into uh, your pumps in there and flipping the bypass in order to bypass your water heater. That way you don't have to use 12 gallons of antifreeze just for this. When it comes to winterizing and dewinterizing, guys, if you don't know what you're doing, your best bet is actually to uh, pay a technician to do it for you. Um, not knowing what you're doing and trying to do it is actually worse than um, paying someone because you can actually uh, mess it up a little bit. So, your satellite prep is here and your cable prep is here. Uh, satellite's marked cable is not, uh, so that's pretty easy. Your freshwater tank. Uh, Potable water is here. A lot of people cut off a piece of hose, put it into there, and that way you can fill. Um, just when you're filling this up, um, make sure you keep a watch on your monitor inside. You want to be able to leave just a little bit of room for air on the top, um, so you don't want to overfill this, obviously. You have a 30 amp cord here um, connected into power. Um, the only thing you really need to know about this is it pushes in and pulls out very easily and uh, stores inside your unit so that's really nice. Uh, in your um, kit inside you will get a 30 to 15 amp adapter that you can take your 30 amp cord and plug it into your home 
Uh, that way, right before you guys head out, you can get the the kitchen um, in the fridge cold and things like that before you put meat in it. One thing you want to make sure, when you're plugged into your home 15 amp service, you cannot run your air conditioner. You will uh, pop, a, pop a fuse or br a breaker or something like that. The tires are down here, guys. Um, these are rated at about 120 foot-pounds, so check that. And your tire pressure is actually up here in the front on this tire sticker right here. 65 PSI's on these tires. Um, check them when they're cold. They tend to expand uh, and uh, when when you're going down the road and you won't get an accurate reading. So check them when they're cold before you go uh, and get them at 65 PSI. This right here guys is your um, the toy area. You have your sewer hose here which we've put in here uh, because you have no back bumper having the gate. The one thing you need to worry about this, this is obviously a filling station for your toys. Whatever you are plugged into, there's a ground cable here. You need to make sure that you ground that unit with this ground cable before you start filling it up. A little bit of a safety precaution there, so just make sure you remember to do that. That is very important. Right here is your tank um, for your gasoline. This works for both your filling station as well as your generator so they both pull off of that and right here you actually have a little bit of a of a pump for that so turn it on and it has a it's, it's got its own five minute timer on it and uh, it'll shut off after that automatically moving around to your back gate uh, you have some really nice handles here guys they lift up and twist in order to pull out uh, we're not going to because we don't have enough room here um, but then twist and push down and it creates a space that you guys can put a padlock or something of that sort on it um, to keep your toys safe and secure. Now while we're here at this corner, um, I'm going to talk to you guys about your stabilizer jacks. Uh, like I said, they are stabilizer jacks. They are not um, used to lift the unit. They're used to stabilize it. So you want to level side to side underneath the tires, front to back with your front, with your front jack and then run these down until they're firm on the ground that way when you're walking in it it's not real shaky on you guys and you're a little bit more stable your vents we'll talk about these on the inside for your uh, back garage area this is the outside of your refrigerator the only thing you guys need to worry about here is this little line here always make sure that this line is outside of your refrigerator and that this small cap here if you can zoom in on it um, that needs to stay on that cap ensures that uh, as you're going down the road, no, wa no, no hot air comes up into your refrigerator. That's a direct line. And so this cap is just a couple dollar piece, but very important to keep wasps and uh, things like that from getting up in your refrigerator, but also hot air. Right here is your exhaust for your, for your heat. Um, one thing you guys want to think about, they build um, guards for these. So uh, it just ties on with a little bit of a, a pin right here in the middle. Um, and that will keep mud daubers, wasps, uh, small chipmunks, things like that from getting up in there. If uh, you guys go to turn the, your heat on uh, at the end of the season and uh, it doesn't go on and you guys take it to a shop and say, whoa, our heat's not working, we just bought this thing, what the heck? And uh, they find that um, some critters have built a nice home in there uh, that does not, that's not covered in your warranty, guys, and that's going to be out of your checkbook. So uh, a simple $10, $15 um, guard on this will go a long way. Uh, right here you guys have uh, capabilities to bring a TV outside so you've got some electric power here and uh, your cable satellite out as well there so that's really nice. Real quick with your steps it's really easy um, up with one reach under grab the bar up with two opposite coming down bar is one and you got a nice handle here for two. Your awning is electric, guys. Uh, it's just as simple as a button on the inside, and I'll show you that when we get in. Uh, it's really easy, so high winds and uh, heavy rain, all you gotta do is press the button. So just press the button, bring it in, uh, wait till it gets nicer outside, and then you can bring it back out. You also have outside speakers and an outside porch light. You have the same type of safety light on the other side um, as well, and those switches are on the inside. Last thing we're going to show you before we go inside is your pass-through storage. Uh, you, have a, you have a great size pass-through storage. That is the back of your generator. So um, 
just be careful with what you're putting around that because that is your generator location uh, and you want to ma make sure not to get anything that you don't want back there but great pass-through storage uh, and that just locks up very easy uh, and that's that's the end of the outside we're gonna go ahead and move on to the inside